is being held electronically be, be, be uh, various means. So to participate, please follow the guidelines that were sent out. If you are not satisfied with a decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within a timely manner, must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. The items on this meeting agenda constitute essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Is, is there a motion to comply with the governor's executive order 16? So moved, this is Betsy. Betsy has moved, is there a second? I'll second. This is Sergeant McDougal. Sergeant McDougal is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It has been approved. The approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve today's agenda? So moved. So moved. Okay. Moved by Nora. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is that Feller? Yes. Okay. Second it by Feller Brown. All in favor? Aye. 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 The agenda has been approved. We have two sets of minutes to approve July 13th and August 10th. We'll let's have a motion for each one, please. Is there a motion to approve the July 13th minutes? So moved. Feller Brown moved. Is there a second? Second, this is Karen. Karen Robbins seconded. All in favor of the July 13th, 2020 minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Move for approval of the August 10th, 2020 minutes. Is there a first? I'll move to approve. This is Nora. Nora moved to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Feller Brown. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the minutes of August 10th have been approved. Approval of the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda will be voted on on a single time. No individual <clears throat> public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the items be removed from the consent agenda. Is there just three items, Chip, A, B, and C? Yes, sir. Okay. Does anyone, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? You usually read through them, Chair. Yes, but well, I'm asking to see if anybody wants to move. Let me read okay. this. Does, does anybody want to remove any of these items? Um, well, I just had a question about B because I couldn't find it on a map. Um, and so I was wondering if, if that could be pulled up just to, so we could take a look at that one, just so we knew where it was. Is there a map, Corby? Does anyone know where item B is located? I'm trying to pull up the uh, agenda packet if Corby doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, can you see my screen? I'm not sure how this works. No, we can't yet. No, I do not see the screen. Chip, right, if you go to the top where it says share, and you can either share your your whole screen or you can share just the application. All right, let me see. How's that? Okay. Does that help, Nora? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, that does help. Okay. Do you have any other comments about that? Commissioner Kern? Um, no, I think I was just, I uh, thought it might be that other alley 263, but it's not, so. Okay, all right. Okay, we have. All right, well, I'm going to read the consent agenda. Uh, item A is a mandatory referral 2020 M001 AB001, a request for the abandonment of right of way and easements along White Avenue from Rucker Avenue eastward to the dead end at 1001 Lebanon Pike along alley number 2057, White Alley to alley 2056 and along alley 2058 from the dead end at 1001 Lebanon Pike, Christopher Dell and Associates applicant. Mr. Chair, this is yeah. Councilmember O'Connell. Um, yes. This one said C sketch attached, and I'm just curious as a matter of course, I did not get an attached sketch. I don't know if we typically do receive those attachments or where the best place to look for those is. Okay. Chip, can you call up where this is located, please? Yeah, let me get to my share screen again. And Chip, could we as commissioners start receiving these attachments with the agenda or else am I, am I overlooking those? I hope you're overlooking it because I, I, I'm gonna claim I sent those out, but okay. I'll double check and make sure you guys should get these every month and I apologize if you did not. It may be because I was looking at the revised agenda. So that might be, you know, I, I might be looking at the wrong email on that. I'll make sure you get them for sure. You need you need the you need the applications and you need the maps. You need all this information. Okay. Uh, does that help, uh, Commissioner O'Connell? It does. I know. I mean, my understanding is this is um, this is going to be out there near Mount Olivet Cemetery. If I'm looking at the map correctly, yes. so. yeah, that's the Catholic Diocese Cemetery. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, item B is mandatory referral 2020-M012-AB001, a request for the abandonment of right-of-way and easements of Alley 264 from South 4th Street to Alley 305 between Shelby Avenue and Fatherland and the abandonment of Alley 305 from Shelby Avenue to Alley 264 between South 4th Street and South 5th Street. Barge, Calthan, and Associates. Item C is a request for a stop sign on Albert Drive at Outer Drive requested by Metro Public Works. What is the consent agenda as read? Is there a motion to approve? I will move to approve, this is Nora. All right, thank you, Ms. Kern. Is there a second? Second. Second by Feller Brown. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The consent agenda has been approved. All right, under new business, um, Chip, it looks like your recommendation is to defer item one through three, which is valet zone. At yes, sir, that is correct. Okay. We need the uh, applicant needs a little more time for that. Okay, so 
it's a, so can we get a motion to defer item one about a ballet zone, item two about hotel registration parking, item three, uh, a conversion, two way to one way. We can get a motion to defer item one, two, and three, please. So moved. Betsy. Betsy Williams moved. Is there a second? I'll second it, Karen. Okay. There's a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Those items are deferred. Item four. A request to authorize seven metered parking spaces at 600 Wolf Avenue South requested by Metro Public Works. These are down in front of the Icon apartment building. I move approval. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Diane, this will go ahead, Mr. Chair, with your second, but I... I'll move, I'll second it. This is Nora. All right, Ms. Kern has moved to a second. And I've got some discussion. I know staff, it sounds like it does as well, Mr. Chair. Right. So we have a first and a second. So let's discuss. Go ahead, I'll defer to staff. No, I'll, I'll defer to staff for a report on this one. Then I'll, I've got a question. Diane, are you on here? Diane? Ms. Marshall? I think she needs to unmute. Uh, she just sent me a text. Okay. She's not online. All right. Jim, can, you, uh, can you give us some background, please? Well, the, the background is the, the original application was for unmetered time restricted parking. And the reason I wanted to discuss it is we've worked with the Gulch. Uh, icon folks we would rather put some kind of metered parking which is also time restricted but not necessarily the time limit that they needed so our recommendation is as shown on the agenda instead of just time restricted non-metered parking we would rather meter it and the gulch is the icon is okay with this as far as i know Hi. commissioner o'connell did you have some comments i did um so Consistent with the ground we traveled in terms of thinking about modernization, I will ask staff, are we planning to do more contemporary meters here? I mean, are we going to install meters that accept more than quarters that take cards, maybe could even be paid by apps? What is when we install new meters from this point going forward, what is our approach to the actual meter technology? These will I'm probably saying this incorrectly, but these will be the standard point accepting meters with the ability to be modified with a new cap, they call it. You can replace the cap of it with a credit card and bill accepting cap. Um, but for now, these will just be the standard meters. And Ms. Massimo might correct me in her presentation. Okay. Okay, so we, we let me ask this also. Do we have the capability of installing meters beyond the coin accepting meters right now today? Today we do have bill accepting meters. Um, I think it's on Dedrick Street. We have a few in KDB. We do not right now have the credit card meters. Um, but right, we do have a few bill accepting meters. Are there plans within the department to modernize the metered technology we are deploying? There is a desire. I'll leave the word plans up to um, Mr. Massimo and the mayor's office. There, there, council member, this is Fata Massimo. There is a, a, a plan under development and I was gonna address that as a part of my presentation a little later on the agenda, but glad to discuss it now if you'd prefer. Well, I just, for these these specific ones, if we're gonna take action, I would personally be very reluctant to put antiquated uh, infrastructure out as a new thing we're doing. I mean, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if this is the kind of thing where if we deferred action on this for a month or a couple of months where we would be able to 
procure new caps or what have you, but I, I'm personally reluctant to deploy uh, infrastructure we know to be out of date the moment it is installed. Right, no, I completely understand your uh, concern there. I, I would say that the schedule that we're on, we're, we're on a pretty aggressive schedule for, for the smart parking RFP, but just thinking about how the entire procurement process, the length of time, I mean, I think if you, if you defer action, you're probably, I mean, we're talking about, yeah. Oh, wow. A, a little bit. Um, I, yeah, I'm sitting here trying to think, um, you know, I, 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 would, I would hope we would be in under in under less than a year um, with getting through procurement, making a selection, getting, you know, the, the modernized equipment um, in place and the system in place and so forth, Councilmember O'Connell, but, uh, but I also know, you know, things take longer and so forth sometimes and just trying to give you sort of maybe a bit of a worst case scenario there. Yeah, I guess, I, I mean, I'll say this. I don't, I don't know that we're going to achieve the goal of improving turnover here by putting in meters that we see little usage of uh, in current day. Um, it, it's, I will say just, I, I'm, I can't not express some frustration that more than a year after starting to examine modernization, we can't even put a new uh, a new type of meter out on the street. Like I said, if you all if you would like, I can describe to you where we are in that process now and what our intentions are and and why we're approaching it from a system level versus um, some of these you know, individual opportunities that are presently being discussed. All right, let me ask this question. Can, I mean, I know it may be a while before we have a chance to get new meters. Uh, can we uh, approve the intent to do the meters? And then I'm kind of like with the, the council member, I'm very hesitant to go put in uh, 20th century meters in a, what is clearly a 21st century corridor. Are, are, you, are you asking me that question, sir? I, well, I'm. if we approve this, can we, do we have to put the meters in right away or can we wait to, I think this is more a public works question. Can yeah. we wait till we get the right meters in? Because I'm kind of like with the council member, I'm not sure how well Particularly in a corridor where I know everyone is on a smart device and no one carries quarters, how effective uh, parking meters with quarters are going to work. The closest thing we might could do, Mr. Chair, is um, the block style meters you've seen on KVB or Dedrick Street. They're mm -hmm. solar powered and they're bill accepting, but they're not credit card accepting. They do have the digital display. It, and you do have to number the parking spaces. So it's a little more challenging, but that's the closest thing we have to, to getting a, a better upgraded meter on the streets right now. I mean, I will say for my part, I think that's better than installing coin only meters. I would agree. Is there flexibility with those meters, uh, Chip, for the future? Well, I don't know what you mean by flexibility, but. The issues we sometimes see with them, um, people forget to check their parking spot number. You got to know your number when you go up to the machine um, and then you pay for your parking. But um, that is no big deal as far as in the big picture. They're, they're more modern style. They look better downtown or in the Gulf. Right. Um, and they do accept bills, so it's a little more um, easier for us to deal with in the coin boxes. But they And they're solar powered which can be good or bad, but they're, but most people are looking for the applications, the Wi-Fi driven meters, and we do not have those yet. Uh, I guess a related question uh, would be if we go with that more contemporary installation that at least does bills, um, uh, are those able, I mean, I think the flexibility the chairman is speaking about there is 
could we adjust those to someday also accept cards, other payments, et cetera, if we go forward with this installation? Yes, the housing would remain the same. You change out the internal components of it. Okay. It's like you would change the bill acceptor to a credit card acceptor or something similar. All right. Okay. Are there any other comments from commissioners? I guess, Mr. Chair, I would say, I don't know if we would need to update this agenda item, but I I would prefer to pass this with the provision that we use at least the most modern equipment available. Okay. I, is uh, Ms. Kern, I think you had seconded this motion. Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I would second an update to add that we would like to see the most modern equipment possible. Okay, so we have a first, we have a motion with a first and a second that's been amended to reflect that we're looking for the most modern thing the city has. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. The motion is passed. Uh, item five, authorize the valet stump zone at one Music Square West for Virgin Hotel. I think this has been modified from eight spaces to four spaces with a recommendation by staff for approval. Staff, can you provide some comment, please? That that pretty much sums it up, Mr. Chair. The original request for was for eight spaces of valet operation. I think we all kind of stepped back and thought that was a little much. Um, we worked it out with Premier Parking and reduced it to four spaces for Valley Parking. Um, I believe we have a representative from Premier Parking online with us to help you with some of the details if you need him. Okay. Council member, this is in your district. Any comments? Yes, I will continue to beat the drum of how many months now out we are from the request for a valet fee study and i guess i will ask staff once again for an update on the status is that going to be covered miss the mozzie or excuse me Faye? is that going to be covered in your presentation at all uh it will be covered under the curbside infrastructure management uh the development of that uh project and that rfp as well as um, a part of the update on the cord project. Um, but but uh, Chip, I think um, you and I have talked about this a little bit in advance of the meeting. You might want to share a little bit of that conversation and thought process as well. Yeah, we, the mayor's office has a big, big transportation plan that you will hear about in a few minutes. Part of that plan covers on street parking and curbside management and the fee structure. Part of what Mary Beth is going to do with Ford is a pilot project and adjust the fee structure for loading zones. So we're basically in the in the steps of studying to see how much that curb space is valued, what the supply and demand would be. And we're going to give eventually, hopefully, commission the rights to adjust prices instead of going to council and that is a legislation piece of legislation that is on the table today and that will include valet it would include all curbside uses sir should so it puts a little bit on our plate as commissioners um but it's the right thing to do Well, I, I mean, I, I guess I would rewind and say I believe that is the direction the commission was heading almost a year ago uh, was to try to 
advance this conversation. So, you know, I don't, I don't know how we got from, we can get a fee study done in two months to um, a process of waiting interminably. If this, if the transportation plan uh, advances this and actually moves us to legislation that reforms this process of, you know, a fixed $50 fee per year and, you know, uh, little, you know, not a, not a ton of analysis about the number of spaces to be used for such, um, then I'm fine. I just, I, I will again express another round of frustration that uh, what was advised as a two month process has dragged on. And I will second that. I think it's been since at least November of 2019 that we've been looking for this. So I understand a lot has happened, but still, uh, we need we need these numbers. I mean, I guess I might, since Mr. Massimo is here, I would ask her. Uh, to weigh in on the uh, the virtues of this particular valet recommendation, or if we ought not uh, defer with temporary permits, uh, Mr. Massimo, do you have a sense of when that legislation uh, would be available? Um, I don't know that I could answer that right now, uh, Council Member. Given all of the the multitude of things that are before council right now. Um, I think in the conversation that I had earlier, uh, I guess it was last week with Chip in preparation for an advance of this meeting, I think what our thought was is that you would go ahead and move forward on these particular, on this particular request. Um, the understanding being that it will later be further informed by, you would go ahead and, and take action on this, but with the understanding that it would be further informed by the curbside infrastructure management plan as it is developed and more a more holistic approach to how we value and manage our curbside infrastructure could be um, put in place. Chip, is that a correct uh, recollection of our conversation? Very well said. It, any existing valley, including if this one passes, is going to be reanalyze to see if it's effective and to see if the price is is appropriate probably not given the price had been in the metro code for years and years so i think it'll be a um i think there'll be a process where all our curbside loading and valet zones will be reanalyzed and restructured as far as fees but, but but we wouldn't hold up anything in the meantime was our i think our point we would go ahead and proceed with, yeah I, I understand and appreciate that. I just I'm still a little bit struck by how um, again we are coming up on a year of beginning to explore valet at the request of the chair, and we have not adjusted a single uh, piece of this policy. So um, I mean, I guess I guess we will wait a little bit longer. Yeah, and I believe. You know, in past meetings, other commissioners have voiced that we we don't feel comfortable voting on valets until we have a more cre concrete understanding of, of what the process is going to be to get the system reformed. And I do worry that if I, I'm excited about the broader curbside management um, project, but having been involved in that last time around, I worry that the valet is going to get caught up in the shuffle and that could take years, if not longer. And we're going to be continuing to pass out valets that are really not serving the city's needs in the meantime. Uh, as the chair, I will say that I think most of the commissioner's uh, views have been quite clear that we've been very hesitant to want to approve more valet stands until we had a clear policy. Uh, and we're almost a year out. We still don't feel like we have a clear policy with where we where we want to go in the future. And there's the old saying, you know, where a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And I, you just feel like looking at the future with 
policy recommendations, you know, we're trading something concrete today for something that might happen in the future. And we. Would it be possible for us, this is Betsy, would it be possible for us to get the information about how many valet permits there are existing that have been approved, how many are temporary, how much money is being paid for that, and how many spaces that takes? Sure, we can get you a report on um, all of that information. Could we have that by the next meeting? Um, Diane is texting me as, as you speak. Um, yes, she has that info. So we will have that at your next meeting. I'll email it to you before then, but we can discuss it at the uh, next meeting. Thank you. No problem, you're welcome. Sure. Well, I would move to defer this item again until we receive that information and until maybe the hopefully after phase presentation will have a better sense and, and can look at coming back to it um, perhaps the next meeting if, if we feel like we're in a concrete enough position to, to make decisions. I'll second. We have a motion to defer and we have a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The uh, the motion has been approved. Okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, is Mr. Mazimos. Uh, pardon my massacre in your name. Uh, maybe I'll just call you Faye. Um, presentation that uh, we're looking forward to uh, receiving. So sure. is there any particular document you'd like us to look at first while you're presenting? Uh, no, I don't think so. What I, what I think I'll do is just sort of overview um, where we are on everything as well as um, provide some additional information on things like the curbside infrastructure management plan and the smart parking RFP and those kinds of things that are also under development. And then just let you all ask questions and we can refer over to materials that have been provided in advance of the meeting um, at that time, if that's all right with you, Mr. Chairman. Proceed. Sure. And you're you're welcome to call me Faye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And just as a reminder, as you get started, um, I did resend all those documents to the commissioners about 45 minutes ago. So they should be in your recent emails if you can pull those up. So um, I know that uh, I'll talk for probably about 10 or 15 minutes and then reserve the balance of the time to explore um, your questions and comments and so forth. So you, you recall, I know that nearly um, a, a year ago uh, now, the, the mayor, of course, during his campaign made a commitment to a new People First transportation plan committed to having that completed during his first year in office. And in spite of the challenges, um, the many challenges that Metro has faced in the past months, um, we have advanced that effort. Prior to limitations on in-person meetings, uh, we met individually. Our very first step in starting that plan was to meet with individual council members. We were keenly aware of comments from previous efforts where council felt like they had not been brought in early on or um, had a, a seat at the table during the shaping and forming. So we started off with meeting individually with all 40 council members, and that was also followed up with 11 community listening sessions that were held throughout Metro Nashville, um, as well as about two dozen or so uh, stakeholder group meetings um, that were mostly in person and toward the end some virtual. Those stakeholder groups uh, ran the gamut from a business group to, I know Nora's on the phone, Walk Bike Nashville, to um, groups that represent our immigrant population, to groups that represent those with disabilities, to neighborhoods. It was just a, a, a really um, 
broad range of interests and perspectives that were represented in the materials that you were sent. And I'm gonna hold this up just to show it to you. There was a, a there's a, a spreadsheet or a slide, a deck slide that looks a little bit like this. And what that reflects is one of the activities that we did as a part of those listening sessions with the community and with all the stakeholders um, was to, um, one, we had originally made sure to tell everyone we didn't come out and say, we've got a plan, here it is, what do you think? We asked everyone, what do you think? And so it was a very um, open, it was, when we called it a listening session, that, that was genuinely what it was. But one of the exercises for our listening was um, people were given $20 in play money and they had an opportunity then to spread that uh, or and to, to share that across about nine different project type categories um, to indicate how they would spend that finite amount of money. It put, put, put everyone in the same position that council members are um, and leadership here in Metro is in every day of having uh, you know, a finite amount of resources and um, a, a large number of needs um, that they're trying to meet. So we received over 2,600 responses um, to that particular exercise. And what was really remarkable about that exercise was the agreement or the alignment across Metro Nashville and across those stakeholder groups with regard to prioritization, um, transit, um, state of good repair, sidewalks and state of good repair were a, a consistent top three um, across most areas. Um, and then of course, there was still lots of interest in prioritization of safety and vision zero and bikeways and signals and traffic operations and, and the other parts that make up a multimodal system. So with all of that input and with also a great deal of respect for all of the previous efforts that, been, that had been done, we did not recreate the wheel. Um, we looked to in motion and to um, the high capacity transit corridor study and to many of the studies that have been done in the planning department and in public works and by partner groups. And we looked at all of those in an effort to inform um, the projects that, um, that we wanted to put together in a plan that would achieve system level performance um, in these prioritized areas that we've heard from the community and from stakeholders. The mayor's focus areas when we started on this effort were around upgrading the bus system, tackling traffic and modernizing our traffic management system strong emphasis on neighborhood infrastructure. So sidewalks, bikeways, greenways, traffic calming, um, improving safety. And as you, you probably remember back in January, the mayor announced that we would, um, we had a desire to become a vision zero city. And we, after that um, announcement and that proclamation of our intention to do that, we immediately turned around and started working towards the procurement of the expertise and services we would need to develop a Vision Zero action plan that um, was recently completed. Um, the, the selected firm is now underway um, with that effort. Um, and we expect to have that within the next 12 months or so, maybe a little less. Um, but again, that will be something that we, that we infuse into the transportation plan project list as it is. Um, in addition, there was a lot of conversation around um, the fact that right now there are many transportation functions within Metro Nashville government. They're spread across different departments. You typically probably think of public works as the place where most transportation is with roads and bridges and signals and so forth. Um, but there are the transportation functions are spread across a number of different areas. And so in an effort to address that, um, but with, um, not create new bureaucracy or any of that sort of thing, but to take all those functions and realign them into a very efficient, effective, focused, accountable uh, unit of, of Metro government and a Department of Transportation that could provide the focus and resourcing needed to ensure performance of this plan. 
once developed and, and delivered. So we also, as we were having conversations with all the groups and we're talking about and, and, and community members and we're talking about project types and project needs specifically, we also heard a lot about equity. And of course, equity is a top of mind topic for all cities in America right now, including our own. And in a traditional transportation plan, typically what you have is there'll be a goal set for equity of some sort of vision statement, if you will. And that's that's very important um, from a policy perspective, but we, we wanted to go further and do more. And so what we did was we developed a tool called Equity in Design. It's in the packet of information that you receive. And what it is, is it's a tool that will enable us to uh, put every project that we advance um, through, from the plan through a rigor of the equity lens, that, that equity and design tool that considers all kinds of facets of equity, whether it's our younger community, our senior community, some of the most vulnerable members of our community, um, particular at how we connect, particularly to healthcare, to education, um, so it looks at it from a from a whole lot of different facets that all together make up a very robust um, equity value. And we wanna look at every project and help build that performance into as many projects, as, as much into each project as we can. And by doing so, if each project is making an equity value contribution to the system, then our overall system becomes uh, one that really achieves that kind of performance. And that's really in addition to having a, a, a more overreaching goal at the top. In addition, we also talked to um, stakeholder groups and members of the community that were concerned about affordable housing. And we went back to the 2018 Affordable Housing Task Force work that was done um, that was chaired by former Mayor Purcell, now chair of the Housing Authority, as well as working with Hannah Davis, who leads the Barnes Fund, and we um, looked at the recommendations from that study, recommended a certain funding level um, should be engaged towards affordable housing um, efforts. We took that recommendation and put it, paired it with two of the, um, in particular, two of the um, corridor, transit corridor improvements that are, that are recommended in the plan on Clarksville Pipe as well as on Murfreesboro. And um, then further committed um, after including that funding as a part of that overall project funding, further committed that as those groups are working together to complete an affordable housing um, inventory um, so that there's a more data-driven um, uh, approach to how we identify challenges and opportunities in that space, that we would continue to have an ongoing relationship there to make sure that the transportation plan as it advances supports the efforts around affordable housing that will be engaged there and, and based upon the, the data that is, that is being um, updated and collected now. In addition, we wanted to truth ourselves. We wanted to fact check ourselves. We set off on this, um, on this effort back 10 months ago with an idea being back to the, the mayor's, uh, you know, his insistence that this be a transportation plan for all of Metro Nashville, that people first transportation plan. So we asked the planning department to do a GIS analysis of the plan and to look at all of what they literally had the list of all the projects um, individually that are that are included, whether the, even those that are in buckets right now. So the bridges, the culverts, the sidewalks, the miles of priority sidewalk network, the miles of priority bikeway network, uh, the better bus network, which the, the recommendations of the better bus network touch uh, nearly every route in the system in terms of some level of improvement, whether that is extending the hours or improving the levels of service or whatever it might be. Um, and then traffic calming requests of which there were uh, about 320 miles of, of road segments, 606 requests. I think it's a little higher than that now um, of traffic calming requests. So all of that plus the individual, if you will, um, projects that are recommended of the Jefferson Street cap plus the four 
uh, corridor initiatives, Murfreesboro, Clarksville, Charlotte, and Gallatin, two of which are transit corridor improvements, two of which are what we're calling innovation corridor or smart corridor improvements, largely um, focused on traffic management, but in the Gallatin space, we're also looking at how we can do demonstration with technology around sustainability and the, those kinds of things. But we ask them to take all of those projects, whether in the individually ones that make up all those buckets, plus the those uh, individual projects that I mentioned uh, uh, last. And we said, analyze this plan against how will we reach the population, the residents, and the employment and jobs of Metro Nashville, Davidson County. What they came back with was that 92% of our population and 94% of our employment will be within a half a mile of a project. So we were we were very pleased that the array of recommendations that we are making and the the approach to uh, ensuring that we were really addressing all of Metro Nashville that we had accomplished that. So we we get to the next sort of um, you know, sort of problematic, I suppose, part of this. And it's like, so, okay, we've got a, a, a $1.5 billion transportation plan. Looks like it, you know, certainly reaches our, our residents, our jobs. Um, it's, it's very balanced in terms of its multimodal approach. Um, and it follows along what we heard from the residents, the community, and the stakeholders in meetings and in the surveys that we did with them of what, what they wanted to see, um, but how are we gonna fund it? When we first started off on this um, initiative, you know, it was, every, it was certainly our every intention to bring this forward with a recommendation of the plan and a recommendation of uh, some sort of a, a dedicated funding source, whether that be a referendum or a a bond or something like that to enable it to um, be implemented in a holistic fashion. That is just not where we live today. Um, there's um, the concerns that understandably exist within our community from uh, managing its way through tornadoes, pandemics, continuing um, issues around uh, the economic impacts of that, um, the ongoing conversations around municipal finance and budget and so forth. Um, d this was just not the time to um, suggest um, something that would probably be viewed as a, as, a, as a burden rather than an opportunity. So what we did was we rolled up our sleeves and went back and uh, really identified what was originally 135 different discrete individual federal, state, local, uh, value capture type funding, private type funding opportunities. We curated that down to 72 that are um, ones that we thought were well matched to the plan of projects that we are proposing, um, as well as were ones that either already were doable within Tennessee state law, as well as uh, Metro code or had the opportunity to um, initiate a conversation that might be successful, you know, might see some change over the coming years. So um, we, that is the, this op, what we're calling an opportunistic funding strategy is the funding strategy then that we are um, recommending would support this plan, at least in the near term. Um, so what that means is projects would be advanced in an individual fashion. We've already started that work because what we know is that the cities across America that are going to emerge from COVID into a COVID recovery time most successfully are those that continue to make progress and that's Nashville. So what we've done is um, there's a couple of projects and this was also in your package, a couple of projects on the transit side, the North Nashville Transit Station and the Green Hill Station, and then on the on the uh, multimodal side, there's a, a a project on Charlotte Avenue, a, a traffic management um, project, as well as 
uh, our plan to initiate an application that would build out our traffic operations center, which is a, a critical game changer for us in terms of how we manage all traffic. And when I say all traffic, I'm talking about pedestrians, cyclists, um, deliveries, cars, trucks, whatever it is, the, that uh, micro mobility, all of that, all of that activity and all of that effort. Um, and right now we don't have a nerve center to build out that modernized system to be able to operate and manage it. Um, and this would give us the opportunity to do that. So we do have some near term or already underway advances towards this opportunistic funding strategy. Is that um, from somebody who has, um, I think probably most of you are familiar with my background. I came here from Atlanta. I worked on seven different programs, big major programs, just like the one we're proposing here over the course of my uh, many years there. And um, is, it op is it ideal to be approaching this with an opportunistic funding strategy? No, what you, you, you would prefer to have dedicated funding sources and have the opportunity to be able to advance a program more ho holistically. But that's really not where we are. And as I said, it's so important though we continue to make progress. And this is not just an effort. How does this differ from doing projects one off here and there? There's a couple of ways that I think it differs. One, we put in the, the a huge amount of work into that analysis of all of those funding opportunities to be able to really match those that we could be really competitive for. And the other thing too is, and I'll mention this as to why we are plan uh, between sometime between November and January to approach council with a request to adopt this plan, even though there's not a dedicated funding source for two reasons. One, um, projects that are gonna compete um, for funding, you look at these at the federal or state, whomever it might be, partner, and they're looking at us as an investor would. And they want to know that we're backing this and we're in the game in order to seek their investment because they've got a lot of folks approaching them for those scarce dollars and, you know, more, more requests than they have dollars to give. We want to be in that most competitive category. They will often, most oftentimes, it's always a question on these is does your proposal um, come from a plan or a program that's been approved um, or is adopted by the local entity? It's not unusual. Most cities adopt their transportation plans. So we think that's important. The other part is important. In fact, what I was just describing is while it's, it's good to make projects happen right now, these projects are assembled in a way and proposed in a way that they achieve system level performance. And that's actually described in the materials that you've gotten to how much of the backlog is eliminated, how much we can improve a certain condition or a certain level of performance. So the notion that these things work together versus getting a project done over here or one over there, or maybe one more over here, even if we're doing them in an individual way, they are still, still setting a part of that foundation for something that already contemplates and has been analyzed for system level performance. So we are, um, we are very excited, even in these very um, tumultuous times that we're in to bring forward what we think is a very sound proposal to improve our transportation system. I will also tell you that it's a living document. And so over time, and we've already had uh, conversations with probably about 25 or so, maybe a few more of the 40 council members. And there are already some changes that I'm, I'm will be coming forward, um, um, some additions um, to this. Um, I don't know that it'll, it'll change our numbers or cost or anything in some really substantial way, but nonetheless, um, there, there will be a further improvements that are reflected in here. And even beyond that, over time, you know, good plans are responsive and live within the communities that they are that they serve. And so I would contemplate that over the coming years that there will be opportunities, challenges, new development, um, something that becomes not feasible any longer and needs to come out, something that we didn't contemplate or couldn't have known at all standing here today that need to come in. And we'll have the opportunity. It's a it's a as every good plan should be a, a, a living document in that regard. So um, this is our first step 
towards really modernizing and improving and creating that transportation system that we all desire. Um, not the last step by any by any stretch of the imagination, but I think an important one. A couple of other things I wanted to just mention quickly, um, and I know some of them you have an interest in going into more detail on, and we will do so, that I wanted to tell you are sort of within our um, portfolio of activity right now that I think would be of interest to the Parking and Traffic Commission. Um, we are um, in the process of developing on the curbside infrastructure management plan the, the original vision for that was to, we, we sought the CORD uh, competitive grant application. We were successful. Um, we, and that CORD is focused on um, looking at loading and unloading in the downtown. We had, a, we, we had a number of different sort of cuts and takes that we could have to that, but we, we chose that one. And figuring out how technology can better enable our performance and our um, service to those that are that are in that loading and unloading space um, in the in the downtown. So the cord pilot is is um, underway, um, and how that is going to inform um, the curbside management. So there was going to be sort of a sequencing to this: the cord pilot, then the curbside management plan, which would also take up the matters that you all have been discussing around our uses of the curb, our management of the curb, and then how we value the curb and set the fee structure around that. Um, in addition to that, which is, these are all very much interrelated in some fashion, is a little further along is um, the smart parking RFP development. We all know, and I certainly have heard your conversations around that our parking system is um, somewhat antiquated and um, in real need of modernization. We are, um, what we are proposing, I know that there was a very um, controversial proposal that um, came forth on this uh, maybe a few, couple of years back or so. Um, we are not proposing, and I want to be really clear with this, this, this RFP is about how we can seek a public-private partnership where we own the assets. We are not proposing anything that would uh, dis you know, disassociate our ownership of the assets. Um, it would, but, but it would enable us to enter into a partnership where uh, we would have a private partner that would be willing to um, invest in new infrastructure there um, in return for a share potentially of the revenue stream um, for a period of time at which time it all becomes, it, it would come over to us. We would be part of that revenue stream though would be them also being our partner in managing um, and operating the infrastructure. Um, so th that is where we are now. We're uh, in the draft stages, uh, but but I would say a, lo a lot of good draft stages. We're certainly um, in uh, detailed conversations with procurement and with law around all of the uh, Metro code and, and state law parameters that would that would influence that. Um, we also um, have recently mentioned to you the Charlotte uh, corridor earlier as one of the opportunistic funding strategies. There was an application called ATCMTD. It's just a federal funding source. Federal High was, was very encouraging of our application on this, and it would be for a portion of Charlotte Avenue where we would uh, test out some traffic technology um, to, to better manage um, really directed largely at the transit um, function in that corridor, um, and, as well as um, how we can improve safety in sections of, the, of that corridor. Um, we also, and I think Billy Fields is on the line as well, uh, been working with Billy on the micro mobility, the SUMD performance-based procurement. That's an active procurement right now, so not much to say about it other than it is active. Um, it is moving forward. It is performance based. Um, so a shift from how we've been um, approaching that and we are we are eager to see um, how we land on the responses and so forth on that. They are under review now. Um, and then two other pieces that I think are important to this group. Um, and it deals also, part of it deals also with the curbside infrastructure management because I know we largely think about that from a parking, loading, unloading, and 
you know, the, all the, but there's a lot of things that are in our curbside infrastructure. One of those is utilities. And we are, we have a group that meets monthly now, a uh, very broad uh, uh, cross section of Metro government um, expertise and uh, called the Infrastructure Coordination Council. And uh, we are in the process of completely reshaping our utility coordination process with all the utilities, um, including our cost sharing, our ABA compliance, or our, our costing period, but cost sharing when that's appropriate, our ADA compliance um, within the curbside infrastructure, and then how we coordinate at both a project and program level. It started off with a conversation with NES, but has grown to encompass um, both the field uh, level side of that kind of activity, as well as the management level side. And then lastly, and then I'm gonna be quiet and let you guys ask questions, is um, we, we one of the things that we've recognized in in the performance and this impacts a lot of what comes under the purview of your organ of your committee um, commission as well is um, how we how we undertake construction procurement contract administration all those activities related to infrastructure and public works space and so we have we are getting very close to the completion of a a construction management manual that we we had some sort of like pieces and parts, but nothing that was really broad that um, that defines how we do our business, not only for the staff of public works in, as an internal document, but also as an external document of how we deal with consultants and contractors and puts forward a philosophy or a culture of working for Metro Nashville means sharpest pencil, sharpest mind. Um, we want you to come to, if you wanna come and, and, and do work with us as a consultant or contractor um, and help us manage construction to the, the optimum um, delivery for Metro, then you need to come with the best cost, sharpest pencil, and you need to come with the best solutions, sharpest mind. So those are all of the things that we have going on right now. Um, and I'm glad to, um, answer any questions um, from this group. And I thank you all so much for your time today and giving us the opportunity to share. Thank you very much. Uh, questions from the group, please. Mr. Chairman, I, I have, this is Betsy. I have uh, a couple of questions. Please. Getting transit through downtown is important but there doesn't seem to be a real plan for that. There are inputs, but still no real plan. And um, Faye, what do you see specifically for that? And how will downtown rights of way accommodate so many uses, uh, of course, including like the loading zone uh, pilot that is set to start in January where Metro plans to charge businesses for delivery? Um, uh, one one other thing I will say is that an additional local property tax at this point in time to fund this is unrealistic given the 34% uh, increase that we are getting ready to get hit with. <laughs> so, and we didn't propose that. Okay, I just saw that on the list. You know, that was on no. the list of possibilities for funding, obviously. And, and, and keep in mind, this list of possibilities, remember the approach that we're taking is an opportunistic approach. So while that might not be a feasible, um, you know, particular item today, it might be in 10 years or five years or whenever. So um, it, and it is a, it is a, it, we, we tried to put all the tools in the toolkit that could be assumed. It doesn't mean that we're going to use them. Obviously, we're not going to probably use all 72 anyway, but um, but I appreciate your your comment and understand the sensitivity around um, perhaps around it even being listed, but but not at all our intent. With it, we're we're very clear about the opportunistic funding strategy approach. Uh, in terms of the downtown um, bus um, information, if if it I, and I think it was not in this 
in this particular package, I know that Council Member O'Connell has it um, from conversations we've had with Council Members, but there is a, a more detailed description of the better bus, what the better bus improvement actually means. And it does, it does deal with the um, issue of how we have got to make some fairly dramatic um, or propose some fairly dramatic improvements to transit um, operations in the downtown in order for any of this to work from a, on the transit side, for any of it to really see the kinds of improvements that, um, and be able to achieve the kinds of um, operational levels that we would we would want it to see. That will be that will be a difficult thing for all the reasons that you just described about the limits of current right of way and um, and so forth. But nonetheless, it is it is included in the better bus, so it is detailed in this in this particular plan. That was one of the more what we think will probably be one of the more commented on components of it as it rolls out in a more uh, public fashion. Um, I, I, I hesitate to mention another plan initiative because I suspect like most folks, you're probably pretty studied and planned out, but I'll mention this anyway. To your point, uh, Ms. Williams, about, about the how does all this work in the downtown in particular, uh, we are working with the planning department um, and as well as uh, the downtown partnership um, to undertake an effort to look at um, there's so many different efforts that are happening right now. Um, this transportation plan is one, looking at some of the key areas that are uh, still developing in the downtown areas. Another, the, the effort that we're talking about around smart parking and the curbside infrastructure management and how do we really bring all that together um, because there's obviously lots of overlap and integration that's got to occur. Um, and we are we are working now on defining and developing a, a, a downtown uh, sort of mobility that effort or plan that looks at how we bring all of these things that are occurring together um, and helps to answer those questions better about um, how all of this exists within a, a finite period of space, looks at you know, one way, two way streets, all that sort of stuff as a part of traffic operations as well. But that that's a excellent question. And I don't know that I have all the answers for you today, other than to tell you that those, those things, those things are all top of mind in what we're doing to move forward and um, make sure that this, the plan and all of these associated supporting studies um, do not result in something that creates something that's more of a problem than you know, than what we have. Other comments, questions? Mr. Chair, this is Council Member O'Connell. I had my hand up, but I wasn't sure if you were looking at those. Um, so I'll, I'll just speak up. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, I'll try to, I think generally for the purposes of this commission, I'm gonna try to keep it to these issues, but since we're staffed by Public Works, I know, say one of the concerns I had um, when I first reviewed this was some of the cost figures for sidewalks and that um, priority piece and the metrics there. So with Public Works staff present, I'd like to revisit that issue and just see, um, yeah, I, I don't know how we came up with um, an estimate of, you know, $200 million to get us as much coverage as is, is estimated in this plan. But I think um, while you're here with Public Works, it might be worth exploring that. Is Jeff on the phone? I am. Hey, he, is, he is not on the phone, I don't think. Sorry. I'm, I'm so on the phone. Not, the, the 200 million um, on sidewalks um, from the current backlog and prioritization and that assessment of the percentage of priority sidewalk needs that it would address Council member came from uh, work that we coordinated with Public Works on. These numbers came from them. So, if Jeff is on the Hammond is on the phone, I know he can address it more directly. Otherwise, I think we'll have to get some additional information back to you on that. Okay, and then um, you know, to your your bigger point, as we look at the, um, I know you've got the. If I'm looking through this. I saw the um, 
there's the traffic management system and signal upgrades. Um, there's the safety vision zero and traffic calming piece. Um, I know we've got some smart corridors in this. Is, is this plan itself intended to encompass the, um, the overall uh, concepts of parking modernization that we were exploring earlier in this meeting and, and where, where should we look to, within the plan for details on that? The parking modernization we did not encompass in this plan. It will be in the text document. I know you asked us when we first met with you as a part of council member meetings, and I should mention that to this group too. What you have in front of you today are what I call component pieces. Um, so one's sort of the project list, one is the equity and design. The, there, so there are, different, there are different component pieces provided to you. Um, there will be what you would more uh, traditionally anticipate in terms of a um, transportation plan document that tells the story, the history of where we've been, tells where we are and talks about where we're going. And so it will have that wraparound, if you will, home document for all of these pieces um, that we're working on now. As a part of that, these other initiatives that I described to you that are sort of happening, they're writing you know, in t along with the transportation plan um, effort, um, but they're happening um, co in a coordinated fashion, but in an independent fashion. Those will all be addressed in the text of the document in terms of how this whole system works together. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, I mean, I, I will probably save some other questions for a forum other than this. I wanna stay focused on sort of the mission of this commission as we sit here. So thank you for that. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, hi, this is Nora. I have a, a question, although um, I know we're also talking later, so I'll also save some questions for that. But um, I was particularly interested in maybe kind of the operations side. And um, on this commission, we've certainly seen um, kind of how, how stretched thin public works is and how um, we're really missing some kind of operational staffing capacity to accomplish a lot of the goals that we already have, just valet parking and, and other things. So what is the plan, uh, apart from kind of shifting everyone into a Department of Transportation to actually expand staffing and have kind of a, a Department of Transportation that's capable of of tackling this pretty, um, you know, uh, visionary list of projects? So, um we identified in the plan, and I, you probably saw that in there, Nora, we identified the operational uh, needs in there. Um, and in addition to that, we have um, back, I don't know now, it's probably been five, six weeks ago, uh, the mayor made the announcement that Mark was moving over to a major um, capital projects role in the, the mayor's office and Shanna Whitelaw from uh, Water was coming over to be, become interim at Public Works, and she and I have been working together on an assessment of current staffing and uh, operational costs and what is necessary and how that will align and integrate in with um, Metro's budgeting process. So, I mean, that that's... That's where we are on that. Okay. Other comments, questions? Um, I guess I have another maybe follow-up question is, what is the timeline for the overall plan and are our components that are, are kind of getting underway immediately or how will that work in terms of some of the more urgent priorities, um, both both parking and some of the things we're facing, but also um, some of the Vision Zero priorities that are emerging. Sure. Um, well, you know, the Vision Zero Action Plan, like I said, is 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 uh, just now starting up, but underway. Um, it will help to inform um, our efforts. Nora, we are, um, and and I know I'm not I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. We will be driven for the immediate term by this opportunistic funding strategy. So as there are funding opportunities that we have, we've actually got sort of two different things that we're working uphill on. The first is that 
when there is a funding opportunity, we have to have a project. It either has to be a funding opportunity that allows for uh, an undesigned project to be considered, uh, a project that's not yet been designed to be considered, and that be a part that, that it, the funding opportunity encompasses that and have match money available. Metro for um, some time, um, and the council member has heard this from me before, so this won't be new at all to him. And I've, in every conversation we've been having with the council members as a part of reviewing this plan, I've been talking about our need looking forward that we have, we've got to start um, getting projects in design so that they're what I call stocking the cupboard. They're sitting there ready to go. And we've got to start allocating match money so that we can be really competitive and, 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 and funding adequately just basic services because that's just not where we are right now. But um, but certainly where where our aim is. Of course, we're doing all that in what is arguably one of the most um, constrained financial situations that Metro Nashville has perhaps ever faced. So the notion that at least for the immediate term that this will be driven by you know whatever the funding opportunities are that that meet projects that are contained within here that can be um, advanced that are either do have some design to them. And most of those are on the transit side, projects that already have had design investment. Um, and then also, for, or, or ones that, you know, allow for that, and then that we can have the match money available. It has to be all of those things. Then we intend to pursue those. And obviously safety is always gonna be first. Um, and we, we believe that um, a lot of that traffic management piece that we're doing now, that we have every opportunity to incorporate safety very directly into things that would otherwise be viewed as more traffic management, but the funding opportunity may be expressed in that way and we'll, so we'll pursue it that way. Any other comments, questions, concerns? I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have one. Yes, go ahead. I have a question that I'd like to ask. Um, I was reading about the Cool Street program, and I know that our possible project, and that uh, I know Phoenix, Arizona, has been engaged in a pilot program for this. What What is the cost difference in that? And is there any plan to go ahead and initiate some of this? Because we do have some paving going on now that that could go ahead and start is it or is it financially unfeasible to do that jorge are you still on the line i am i'm here all right you want to talk about the cool streets please the cool streets well actually i'm not familiar with the cool streets that phoenix is doing currently um I'd have to do a little bit more digging and information there. We can get back to you on that, Ms. Williams, get you an answer yeah. on that. Absolutely. We can do some more. Thank you. That's, that'd be great. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, I have one other thing. Yes. Go ahead. I, I would ask um, that in in the consideration for transit operational hours, I know that uh, what they're proposing is that they end at 1 a.m. and start at 4 a.m. And of course, we have employees, uh, lots of employees downtown who work in that three hour window when transit would not be running. And uh, I would just ask that consideration and discussion with business owners, please be given for uh, extension on those things. Okay. Great point. Thank you very much for that. That's, that is very helpful. Um, Faye, when do you see that you'd be going more to the public to get their feedback and input on these plans? Because just based on a lot of literature that I've read is that 
the most successful plans uh, tend to get citizen involvement. That was the fatal flaw of the previous modernization plan. Um, and then, you know, some of the other things just tangentially has been in many cities where they've done some improvements, particularly to the curbside, that generates revenue and that revenue gets regenerated back into those communities where you do that work so that people start to see tangible results. I would, my observation is that many citizens in Nashville felt like they've been promised if we have this development, we're going to see results in our neighborhood and they're seeing development, but they're not seeing results. So how do we, that I know some of that is a long window. I'm not looking for a long answer, but just uh, some quick feedback, please. Okay, sure. So let me answer the first one. The first question, we have done an extensive amount of community outreach already. You recall um, we've been in uh, Antioch, Donaldson, Bordeaux, North, Jolton, West, Bellevue, Downtown, Green Hill, South Nashville, East Nashville, Madison, um, as well as with all those, you know, couple of dozen community groups. So we, we have in fact done that already in terms of the coming to what we were even recommending. In addition though, coming up in October, there'll be five virtual community listening sessions that we are working on now. We are revisiting all those same stakeholder uh, uh, groups that we met with and more um, in terms of revisiting now what we thought we heard from you. Did we hear you right? That sort of question. Um, and then Lastly, we are we are have built out and are as soon as the plan is ready to post on the website, um, which again should be in October, then we would um, we would go ahead and put a survey up on the hub that anyone can access. Um, the the other piece of that that we're working on though is a very specific strategy around digital divide concerns to make sure that we are reaching. Um, you know, those who might not have ready access to the hub or ability to call into one of these virtual meetings and so forth. So I completely agree with you about how important that piece of it is. And that's why we've worked so hard on that piece of it. And I, and I hope that those numbers of how the proximity of our residents and our employment to improvements is, is also a telling piece for this. In terms of the last piece and sort of history of development occurring and people not really being able to, if I'm paraphrasing you a bit, see the uh, return on investment, so to speak, of what they thought they would see yes. there. Um, our work with the with planning and the planning commission um, is part of where we are working to bring all of this together in terms of, and the, these individual um, pieces that I'm talking about, because the development activity that is housed under and managed through the planning department and how the infrastructure then comes together and is monetized with that, those are, we're having to work those things together. And so that's an, that's an active part of what we described to you today that's ongoing. Right. I don't know if I have any good no, quick answers for you. No, that, that, that's fine. But you know, one thing I'll go back to is you've heard some of the frustration from commissioners about, you know, trying to get just what I call some of the low hanging fruit, getting a better, a more robust pricing structure for valet. And I think that would go with some other curbside things. And here we are almost a year out and we're still a long way away. So any effort towards trying to get these things moving forward uh, quicker, I think would be greatly appreciated because I think that's one of the frustrations. You know, there's a lot of talk of a plan and plans are good. You need a plan, but at the same time, I mean, I think there's a sense we need some action too. I, I am completely there with you, completely there with you. Um, people, people, uh, we're here to make a difference. I mean, that's what we, that's what we come to work for every day. And it, we're supposed to, um, know that we're making a difference in our community with the residents and the businesses and, um, and so forth. And so um, I, I understand that frustration and this pace sometimes that things move. Um, and then it, I'm sure it feels like things get started and then they never get finished. 
it's not even just the pace. It's they get started and never get finished. So I appreciate all those frustrations and I promise you to do my earnest best to overcome those. All right, any other comments, questions? Thank you for coming today, Faye, really appreciate it. Oh no, I, I appreciate it very much. I, I think we will be back uh, with you with more detail, hopefully soon on the smart parking RFP. Um, so if it's ready by next meeting um, for us to come back and have a more detailed conversation around that, we will do that because I think that's going to be the next thing that's ready for, that's moving forward and getting ready to, you know, for action as, we, as we've as we been talking about here. And then we'll keep you posted um, on these other pieces and parts as they move forward. And right. I wanted to thank, Ms. Williams asked lots of questions today and I wanted to particularly thank her for that. That was super helpful. Um, to um, to push us, and I appreciate it. Okay, you're very right. welcome. <laughs> I appreciate your time and your expertise. You're 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 a real bright star, and I, I appreciate your work. Okay. All right. So, thank you. So, uh, when we have some more concrete things, we'll be able to go back to the public with getting more input and advice because that. That was again the problem in the past. We'd go out and get RFPs and then you can't discuss anything. So if we can just try to keep the public involved as we move forward, that would be that would be great. Very good. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. Anything else? I I have one question, Mr. Chairman. How long do we think it's going to be before we can meet in person again? Uh, Ms. Costonis, you may know more about that than I do. I have a sense that the governor's executive order expires this month and we may be meeting in person uh, next month. So the governor did extend the executive order, um, but um, with some changes. Um, so going forward from October 1, beginning on October 1, um, uh, meetings can continue to be held virtually. Um, but um, there are kind of a few more um, conditions on how that would be conducted. Um, uh, you know, um, and most of them are things that we are already doing. A few we might just want to make sure um, that we are um, more or less on track um, for doing or, or kind of enhance or remind the commissioners that we need to be a little more careful about that if we meet um, electronically in October. Um, uh, the um, the option to meet in person um, uh, does exist as well. However, so if, if the preference of of was would be of staff and the commission would be to meet in person, that could also be done. I mean, if it's possible to meet in a locale where we can have social distancing and be more face to face, I would prefer that. I know. I think the. Council, y'all are looking at trying to go to a larger venue like the convention center or something, is that? That is correct, Mr. Chair. As of our first meeting in October, uh, the vice mayor has arranged to have a space in the convention center with sufficient uh, physical distancing for all members. Now, obviously our commission with staff is smaller. I think the, you know, the questions are then to how you, um, you know, work with ITS and Metro National Network to ensure that the meetings are still able to be, um, you know, documented, you know, potentially televised, et cetera. But um, it may be worth reaching out to ITS to understand what spaces are being used. I, I believe the Planning Commission is still using the Howard Office Building, um, so. We, we can explore that. And I, I do think as of October, it's probably gonna be worthwhile for us to consider doing so. My understanding is that uh, all, for instance, for Metro Council, all votes would have to be roll call votes. And so I think that would also, unless Ms. Costonis disagrees with the interpretation, anything we vote on, including the consent agenda, would have to be a full roll call vote starting in October. Yes, that is one of the changes, council member, and that, that every single vote has to be recorded as a roll call vote. Um, and then there are a few other things, like um, if um, uh, uh, members of the commission are not um, uh, shown on video, um, each person has to identify themselves as they're speaking. Um, and just kind of a few other additional questions like that, just to make sure um, 
that the meetings are as transparent as possible, I think. So, I mean, to your point, Mr. Chair, I would, I would support personally uh, returning the commission to in-person meetings for our October meeting if we can identify a satisfactory space. Yes, I would too. Uh, okay, any other comments, questions? Chip, if you would keep us posted on potential venues. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I know that was uh, an hour and a half. Appreciate time. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn the meeting. All right, we have a first. Is there a second? I second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.